Hello everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. I'm going to start going into integration now. This is the second time doing this. I made some errors on the last one about integration, so I'm going to just redo it. So I had this function over here, and I said that integration is like the area underneath that curve from B, from A to B, as you can see right there. Integration is also like, what is the question to, of the answer? So it's kind of like Jeopardy, where let's say we have um, the function, excuse me, uh, we have the function like, we have the function, let's use cos. We have the function uh, cos. So what is what do we take the derivative of to get to cos? Well, we take the derivative of sine, and that will be cos. So the derivative of cos is sine. So do you see how it's like a jeopardy relationship where you're given the answer and you need to come up with the question, basically, with integration. It's the opposite of derivation. And it's also represented by an area underneath the curve. And also, you could find, like, the values if it's applied to real life. So, like, if function was velocity, for example, you could find the total distance by adding the initial. Sometimes if you're giving an initial, you add the initial and then take the integral those of that bound and then get the total distance covered by that particle that's just an example of um, using integration I guess you could say integrating it into real life examples with uh, physics and other things whatnot uh, but let's start with antiderivatives and these are integrals without bounds so they're actually going to result in a family of functions so therefore, you need to add plus c at the end of when you're doing these. Okay, with definite integrals, that's when we have something like this. You would write them as a to b, and then whatever your function is. All right, let's just go and jump into some integration rules. Uh, the constant one, where we have k f u d u is equal to k moves outside, and we just have a function. Okay, so now let's try some other things. Uh, we also have, you could also add the integrals together. So let's say we have a function and a function and subtracting them like that. This is equal to the first function plus or minus the integral second function. So you could split them like that too. Let's just get into some um, more function equation-y like ones. Okay, so we have the power rule again. It's also present here. This one is the integral of x to the nth power. It's going to be equal to x and plus 1. Do you see how we add a plus 1 instead of subtracting it? In derivatives, when we had the power rule, we subtracted 1. But here we are doing plus 1. And then that's going to be over n plus 1. Okay, so now we're going to look at some going to look at some trig ones. Uh, sine is equal to negative cos. Cos is equal to sine. Tan is equal to this is a crazy one. Ln of cos u c. That's a really crazy one. So there's sine, cos tangent. Um, if you match up some of the derivatives that you know, like the derivative of tan plus secant squared, well, the integral of secant squared is tan. Well, you also have to add plus c at the end of these, actually. All of them have to add plus c because we didn't put bounds. Okay, so some of the more complicated ones would be um, ones involving... Again, natural log. So if we have something like integral of du to u over u, I'm sorry about that, this is going to be equal to ln absolute value u plus c. Also, there are going to be things like a to the u, which is going to be equal to, in parentheses, 1 over ln of a times au. 
some other crazy stuff like that. We also have the inverse trigs, so like arc sine, arc secant, arc tan. So first we have du, move the camera again, du squared of a squared plus u squared is equal to arc sine u over a plus c. So have du a squared plus u squared is equal to 1 over a arc tan u a plus c. Last one of those, du over u, u squared minus a squared, square root of that is equal to 1 over a arc secant this time u a plus c. So those are some of the more um, basic ones that you'll run into. There are a lot more difficult ones, but those involve um, fundamental theorems of calculus and whatnot. Uh, let's go through. Uh, we could also look at, actually, let's look at an absolute value. Let's write that one in there, too. I've been noticing there's a lot of absolute value ones. So absolute value of x dx is equal to x absolute value of x over 2 c so there's just another extra bonus one right there uh, let's do some examples now and we're going to try some of the ones hopefully with the rules that we could apply now because we know them okay so let's first start off with something like integral of the fifth root of x fourth dx so when we um, put this in a different form, it'll be x to the fourth, one fifth, which would be x to the four fifths. Okay, now we could apply the power rule of integration and we're going to get five ninths. Because we're going to put that, we're going to add one here, but one is five fifths, so it would be actually nine fifths. But then when it's we're dividing from that new number because of the n plus 1 in the denominator. We're going to flip this fraction, so that's why it's 5 ninths and not 9 fifths. 5 ninths x of the 9 fifth power and plus c at the end. And we're good to go with that one. Next example, we'll try, let's try a particle one. Let's do this particle particle moving across the x has the velocity of 5 divided by square root of t, where t is greater than 0, at t equals 1, the position, x, the position, is equal to 11, and we need to first know the acceleration, and so how do we get that? So we're just going to take the derivative of this, this is 5 t to the negative one half. That's going to become, if we take the derivative of that using the derivative power rule, we get negative five halves t, three halves. All right, so now the position is actually where we're going to be using our integration because we want to get from the velocity to the position. Well, if you remember, position, when you take the derivative of position, it becomes velocity. So we need to actually backtrack ourselves here to find the position. So we're going to use integration on this 5 over the square root of t. So when we do that, we're going to take the integral of 5t to the negative 1 half. And when we do this rule for both the constant, which is that kf u du thing, so I'll move the 5 out. Then we're just left with t to the negative one half. We add one to that, so it's going to be. It's going to be. Sorry about that. I got. So it's going to be outside here, and then t to the one half again. We use the power rule, and we're going to add two two to this two over two. So that's going to be t to the positive one half now, and then we're going to actually divide by one half. So when we divide by one half, we're actually multiplying it by two. So this would actually be uh, 10 to the t 
to the one half plus c. Now remember, it's an it's an antiderivative, so it's a family function since we have a plus c there. We need to know the specific position function when t is equal to one and x is equal to eleven. So how we're going to do that? Well, we're going to plug in one for t, so ten one times one to the one half power plus c will equal our eleven. When we do this, we get 10 plus c is equal to 11. So that must mean c is equal to 1. Therefore, our position would equal 10 t to the 1 half plus 1. So there's like an application of basic integration and some rules to get started. Um, we'll get coverage of some of the weirder rules in the next video. Thank you, and stay tuned for more. Have a good day. Do something nice for someone.